Hello, and welcome back to Joomla Development 101. In this lecture, we're going to look a little bit more in depth at setting up a development environment. Now, I'd like to point out before we begin this lecture that there are a wide variety of ways in which you can set up your environment on your local machine, and a lot of these options are personal preferences. I'm going to try to be as open as I can with all the different options available, but please keep in mind that you can choose whatever format works best for you. I'll try to give you several different options and also share with you the options that I've chosen and why I've chosen them. The first thing we need to do when looking at setting up a development environment is the operating system on the computer that you're going to be using. There are, of course, three options in this field. We can look at Windows, Mac, or Linux. Each have their pros and cons, and this usually comes down to user preference. I choose to use Mac. In the past, I've used both Windows and Linux, but have found the Mac to give me the best options for what I like to do in my development environment. Based on that development environment and that underlying operating system, the next bit of the puzzle is the IDE, or Integrated Development Environment. The IDE provides an enhanced method for writing code. Often it will give you shortcuts, tips and tricks, allow you to quickly jump between different classes, do quick lookups on things, as well as even perform basic subversion or Git actions. There are a variety of IDEs available, and I couldn't name them all in a single slide. I will point out a couple. From my personal experience, I started with Dreamweaver, and some of you may laugh, it was quite a while ago, but that was where I began with my coding experience. I then shifted to Eclipse. Eclipse is a Java-based IDE, and while it's very robust, PHP was not its main or original focus. There's also NetBeans, which is also based on the Eclipse base, and then Aptana. And I switched to Aptana from Eclipse because Aptana is more of a PHP-focused Eclipse IDE. So Aptana is similar in many regards to Eclipse, but it's built with more of a stronger focus for PHP. The newest one and most recent one being used significantly is called PHP Storm. It maintains a very similar interface as what you see when looking at uh, Aptana or Eclipse, uh, and yet seems to be a little bit faster, a little more focused specifically on the PHP aspect. A lot of the core Joomla developers choose to use PHP Storm in their development. There's also Cloud9, which is an online IDE. This is relatively new, not used by a whole lot. It's, it's just recently become a stable platform, uh, but it's not often used in a, in a hardcore development environment. And then there's tools like Sublime Text or Sublime Text 2. Uh, this is actually my IDE of choice. I've gone the route of going from Dreamweaver to Eclipse to Aptana, PHP Storm, and Sublime. Some will say that Sublime Text 2 is not truly an IDE in the true sense of the word, um, but I choose to use it for my purposes because I do like that it's extremely fast loading um, and do a lot of the development without my hands ever having to leave the keyboard. Uh, I'm, I'm very uh, non-graphical. I'd prefer to use a non GUI interface. So even if that involves um, command line access for some things, I prefer that approach because I feel like I can more quick create what I want to create that way. It's not for everyone, so I'm not by any means discouraging you from using a different IDE such as PHP Storm, um, but a lot of people uh, do like to use the text-based IDE um, or the text-based solutions such as Sublime Text 2. The next bit to look at is your local web server. And there's two options here. Uh, you want to make sure that they contain Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And there's actually, in fact, I should say more than two options. The two options on screen now are XAMPP and MAMP. XAMPP is usually used in a Windows environment because it quickly allows you to run MySQL, PHP, and Apache without having to install a, a lot of extra things on your Windows machine. It basically contains each of those packages and runs as a self-sustained unit. MAMP does the same thing for a Mac, so Mac, Apache, MySQL, PHP, MAMP. 
Other alternatives include manually installing each of the three services, Apache, MySQL, PHP, direct on your machine. Later versions of Macs include some of these by default. So by default in Mac, on some of the later versions, you will actually have Apache, MySQL, and PHP come pre-installed on your machine, and you have to do some basic setup to actually be able to use those. There are benefits to having a ZAMP or a MAMP as opposed to doing it direct on your machine. I personally prefer them running as local services individually that I have created and updated. On my machine, I use Homebrew, which is a Mac application uh, that you can install that will help you set up independent packages. We also want to look at folder organization. So when you create the structure, on your laptop or on your desktop for your code. You want to set it up in a particular way so that it's organized and easy to find. And this is important because if you use XAMPP or MAMP or one other tool like that, they will give you an htdocs folder. Even if you use the standard uh, Apache PHP MySQL that ships with MacBook, you will need to define where that site's folder lives. So usually on my machine, I set it up in my user root and then sites and then in my sites folder, I'll create an all caps folder called projects. I'm particular about all caps. I used all caps for these folders because in my sites folder, I'm also going to have an all caps folder for Git, an all caps folder for SVN if I choose to have any SVN projects, and then I'm going to have all of my websites in my sites folder. So on my machine, I would type in localhost forward slash and then the name of the website because I set my localhost in my Apache config to point directly to the sites folder in my user root. Because I want to distinguish between all of the various websites in my sites folder and my more uh, configurable options or folders, I've capitalized each of the ones that is not a true website. So projects would be where I would place all the project files um, related to the IDE of my choice. If you use PHP Storm or if you use Sublime Text 2, you would save each of your websites as a project file. This isn't all of the website files. This is merely a project file that's used by your IDE. And to keep things clean, I place each of those in the projects folder. I will also use a capitalized git or svn folder to store all of my code. By doing that, what I can then do is symlink between the website components or plugins or modules folder and the original git repository. This way, when I'm working in my IDE of choice and I'm editing files that are under a version control system like git or svn, any changes that I save there are also saved in my local website so that I can test those changes instantly. This saves from having double work because the last thing I want to do is try to keep a git folder where I'm committing my code up to a repository and my local website in sync. That can become very hard to do and it's very easy to forget things that way. So it's important to remember several things when setting up your local environment. Choose the operating system that works best for you, that you're most comfortable with. Secondly, choose an IDE or code editor that you prefer, that's going to work well for you. If you're just getting started with code, then I would recommend looking at PHP Storm. If you are a little more tech savvy, or if you prefer to work with your hands on the keyboard at all times, uh, then Sublime Text 2 might be a good choice for you. Lastly, I encourage you to stay organized. By staying organized, you ensure that you always know where things are, how to find them, and keep everything in an orderly fashion. These are the basics of setting up a good development environment. As we continue through this lecture series, you will begin to see how my environment is set up specifically as we write the code that goes along with the various lectures. At various points throughout these series, I may point out how I'm setting something or structuring something in my local development environment. This is not how it needs to work in yours,
but I'm merely showing you as an example one way in which you can configure your environment. Stay tuned in the coming lectures where we will look more at code versioning as well as some basic testing purposes. If you do have questions or comments about how you're setting up a development environment, please don't hesitate to post those questions or share your stories.